Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. And we are doing a ranking video today. As you can tell by the title, it is that time of the year of the award season to rank the 10 best picture nominees. Now the plan was to actually do this video with Desiree, which is what I did last year or the last two years I think it was, but Desiree did not watch all the best picture nominees. But hopefully I'm gonna get her to do the who's gonna win video with me when we go live. Uh, just cause when I'm with her, I just feel a little bit more confident versus when I'm doing it by myself. So even if she's just there for more moral support. But let's go ahead and get on with this video. We're gonna try not to to like linger too too much number 10 is tar it wasn't for me i didn't get it it was boring and yes i heard a lot of people always talk about how boring it was but how like a like masterpiece type of movie and it's gonna be you know in the film schools whatever it's gonna be dissected and everything like yeah okay i get it you know and kate blanchett's performance is great but for me i just i i don't get the movie even like the ending uh, i mean it gets like a fall of grace type of movie i thought it was really going in a different direction it didn't quite go in the way that i saw it going i don't know you guys it just wasn't for me all right we're gonna move on number nine it's gonna be elvis now the, i do have a review on this one and i meant to rewatch it but i just never did and so I saw it when it came out like earlier last year. They tried to put too much into it, right? And it was already kind of long and it, it was going too, too fast. I feel like we should have, well, they should have rather focused a little bit more on certain deals. At the same time, I feel like maybe this could have been better off if it was like a some sort of a series, but then, you know, then Austin Butler wouldn't have gotten nominated for it. I mean, she would have gone to like the SAG and the Golden Globe, right? But as far as an Oscar nominated, he wouldn't have gone there. Austin Butler's performance is what makes this movie because he does fully embody Elvis Presley. He does a fantastic job. Very, very much deserving of a nomination. Tom Hanks, I, I don't know. I love me some Tom Hanks, but I did not love him here. Yeah, we're just kind of, we're going to move on. Triangle of Sadness because it was still something about Triangle of Sadness as much as I really also wasn't totally here for it, it's a satire film because of that particular scene, which I did talk about, you know, my monthly wrap up, which I won't briefly mention here. There's like a lot kind of going on <laughs> also. It's set up in like in three different parts. The whole first part definitely could have done without, but there is this scene where everybody is projectile vomiting and like shitting everywhere on this boat because they get seasick. It's disgusting, you guys. And when I tell you that nobody else is really warning you about it, because they ain't your friends, and I'm your friend, I'm gonna tell you about that particular scene. If you were, if you wanna call me out because I'm spoiling it for you, then you can call me out. But I feel like that's definitely something that somebody should be warning you about. Because what if you have like a nasty ass gag reflex and stuff? Because Desiree was just not here for that particular part. She was almost gagging. I'm like, oh my God, are you gonna throw up? Yeah, that is coming in in number eight, right? All right, so then number seven. I'm just looking at it and make sure that's where I want to keep it at. Yeah, I feel like... <sighs> you know what? I think I'm going to move it. I am going to move my number seven. Okay, so number seven, it's going to be women talking. It is something that is based on a true story about these, like, uh, men. Uh, should we even call them men? These pigs that were drugging and raping the women of, the, of their village. And it's just these women literally just talking in a barn about what are we gonna do? Like we we cannot stay here because this is wrong, right? Like I don't care. Like I'm not gonna have, I'm not gonna continue to go through this, and I'm not gonna put my kids through this. You know, it's it's the generation where they're like enough is enough. I'm gonna protect my children. I'm not gonna let the male children, you know, of my life become these predators. So what are we gonna do? Because you know, during this time, women had no rights. They didn't know how to read, they didn't know how to write. Uh, they literally thought that if they left their husbands, they were gonna go to hell. So it's kind of like the pros and cons of what's gonna benefit us of staying or leaving and what are the consequences rather that we're gonna continue to have if we stay here. So it's very, very interesting. It's very, uh, it's a very powerful movie, I feel like. Um, definitely something that you should watch at least once. I'm good with just a one-time watch. I had it a little bit higher, but then after kind of like consideration, yeah, it, it, it needed to kind of drop down just 
just a little bit. Then we're moving on to number six, and this is going to be all quite on the Western front. I know a lot of people call this like one of the best like war movies. Personally, I would disagree with that. Uh, for me, I still prefer something like Hawkshaw Ridge, uh, 1917. Um, those are some of my favorite war movies, but this is still, it's still high up on the war list, but it's not an absolute favorite. Um, this It's a Netflix original, I don't remember if I said that or not. Um, it is in German, I believe it is, and we're set in World War I, right? That the one? World War I, World War II? We're in one of the war worlds. I think it was World War I. Start of the recruitment and how they were very like eager to go and serve the country without knowing exactly what was happening. Uh, because once they get there, they're just like, wow, this is not what I was expecting. I mean, I don't know what they were expecting, but I guess at that time, it was, you know, they didn't really know, right? About these wars type deals. And they were young kids, right? So they were just kind of following them around um, as they're fighting and you know being in all that other situations and like who's gonna live who's gonna honestly the outcome of what happened I was like oh my gosh like really like oh wow it it, it kind of got me there at the end it looks beautiful it absolutely looks beautiful top five before we do get there if you haven't already please give this video a like subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time I post something new I will be going live at some point, yeah, I don't really be saying stuff because I get scared when people come on my lives and they be asking me questions. <laughs> but at some point, I'll be going live before the Oscars to do my prediction video. So I think if you hit the notification bell, right, that'll pop up. Number five is The Banshees of Inishirin. This movie, it's so freaking entertaining. Like, it's just about this guy who does not want to be the other guy's friend anymore, right? and literally gets to the point of dismemberment like every time you talk to me i'm gonna take my freaking fingers off boom 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 you think i'm playing mm. it's so good you guys it's funny uh there's a very very sad part that i was just like oh you best get angry and i loved it um uh, it gets i mean it goes really far right like these best friends to i guess like rivals then we're moving on to number four we have the fable mans this is like Somewhat based on the life of Steven Spielberg and his love for cinema where it started. It's a beautiful like coming of age story. If you like Spielberg, uh, then you may like this movie. If you love coming of age stories, it's a really, really nice coming of age story. Especially if you are somebody who likes film because this is a coming of age story with the love of film. Coming in in third place is gonna be a shocker because I literally, literally, did not want to watch this movie. I had no intention and then it got nominated and I'm like damn it I gotta watch it. Literally it's the last best picture movie that I watched. I uh, I had it. I canceled my ticket and I'm just like I don't want to see this movie because I did not like the first part and that is Avatar The Way of Water. Boy was this movie good. <laughs> it's kind of hard for me to like admit how good it is because I was like so against watching this and look at that number three y'all um of course the world of Pandora is absolutely gorgeous I gave props where props were due with Avatar it's a stunning stunning looking movie it's just the overall story that I wasn't here for okay and that ended it so long and this movie is just as long and then it was in 3d and i really don't like 3d movies but it, it, we're, we're not talking about my dislikes right i like i liked it okay we have really nice action sequences there's heartfelt things happening here like i literally got tear eye. not my top two it should be no surprise if, especially if you've seen my top 10 uh favorite movies of 2022 it's the same order of my top two over there okay so if you've seen those you know already coming to second place top gun maverick i wasn't a fan of the first one and it's kind of funny because i said the first part and you probably were thinking is it gonna be top gun or it's gonna be avatar right wow 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 what a great 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 summer action-packed movie it's great the first time i watched it it was great the second time i watched it i think i saw it a third time as well no i just saw it twice loved it each time definitely a sequel that surpasses the original one like i said i wasn't a fan of the original one and i just saw the original one last year before watching top gun maverick danger zone mm -mm. i've talked about this movie enough okay we're gonna move on number one no surprise here everything everywhere all at once y'all i freaking love this movie like this movie is like making it into like the top movies like of all time absolutely loved it it has like everything that i could possibly want 
it's weird it has action it has heart it has a great message it looks beautiful the performances were amazing the costumes were great at least two of them are gonna win y'all i i ha key for sure right Michelle, like I said, in the race with Kate, but I really, really hope it goes to her. I hope this movie wins Best Picture, cause wow, it is like so different than I think anything I've ever seen. So unexpected, right? I mean, it's a twenty-four movie. You guys, this is like a great, great multiverse. Like this is how you should do a multiverse, and because of the different levels of Evelyn. It's why I feel that Michelle should win Best Best Actress because she does so much. You know, she's not just this one character like Kate will like everybody else in the other performances, but like she's literally playing different characters in these different universes. Oh my God, it's so great. I freaking love this movie and I've just talked about it so, so much like last year all the time. I love it. I love it. I love it. This is how I'm ranking the 10 Best Picture nominees. Let me know down below, how do you guys rank it? I know we're gonna disagree, it's totally fine. Your list is your list, my list is my list. Let's just respect each other. All right, you guys, so that is it for me today. Until next time, I'll see you guys at concession. Bye.